I climbed every day for 30 days and I was actually quite surprised with the results. Here's what happened. You know, I always thought these challenge videos were kind of gimmicky. Like, I did a thousand burpees every day for a year. You won't believe what happened. It's like, yeah, maybe you got shredded, but you probably also got some tight pecs and an achy back along with it. Then my brother Josh made a few and it didn't really change my mind about it. Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So I've always wanted to take up climbing as a hobby. Climbers seem to all be strong, flexible, and have a calm, humble, confident demeanor. All things I value highly. But I tried a few years back and my shoulder just couldn't handle it. If you wanna know more about my journey with shoulder pain and dislocations, check the link on the screen. But I realized recently that my shoulder isn't the limitation anymore. If anything, climbing could be actually really good for it. Push it to the next level. So I decided to take on the challenge to climb every day for the day. Before I got started, I came up with a loose plan. And I say loose because I really had no way to anticipate how this was gonna go. First, I'd need to decide on what type of climbing I was gonna do. Most beginners will top rope or boulder. Top roping is when you're attached by a rope to the top of the climb, and it usually involves someone else belaying you. Bouldering is when you climb with no rope, but the routes are usually less than 20 feet up and you have soft pads under you. So if you fall, there's minimal consequences. I decided I was gonna do most of my climbing in the gym bouldering because I don't need to worry about weather and I don't need anyone else with. Climbing can be really hard on the fingers, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders. So I needed to make sure I wasn't gonna get any overuse injuries. To do this, I'd have to take warming up very seriously. I put together a warm-up routine specifically for climbing. And if you're new to climbing, I would highly prioritize this. I also kept my normal training regimen with an emphasis on balancing out all the climbing. And lastly, probably the hardest one is not overdoing it. I made a commitment to stop when I was feeling good, not pushing past into fatigue or failure. Now, if you want to get good at something, you should seek the guidance of someone who's been there. So I needed a mentor. Luckily, my brother Mitch has been climbing for years. He agreed to climb with me as much as possible to give me tips and advice as needed. It's a lot of this shoulder. Yeah, you feel that? Yeah. If you wanna see more of him, check out his YouTube channel in the description box below. Okay, so I needed some objective measures to track my progress. For climbing, this is pretty easy. Just see what routes I could do when I started and compare that to where I end up. But I also wanted to see how this would change my performance in some related skills. So the two obvious answers were number of pull-ups and max hang time. So on day one, I did all of my tests. I did my pull-ups in a very specific way to control for all variables. Every rep starting from a dead hang, getting the clavicles to bar height each time, pausing at the top, and controlling the way down. I was able to get 11 reps. Next, I tested my max hang, and I got two minutes. Ooh. Oh, that's long. Then we went climbing. For bouldering, there are a few universal scales, but many gyms will just create their own scale. My gym's rating system uses dots. The more dots, the harder it is. And there will often be a plus or a minus on the last dot, indicating whether it's an easier or harder route. So for example, a four plus is harder than a four, but easier than a five minus. On my first day, I was able to complete all of the three pluses and none of the four minuses. And this was perfect because it gave me a really clear starting point. For the climbers out there, this translates to about a V3 in the gym. And so I started climbing every day. Days two through four were pretty standard. I got a routine of working out and then climbing for 30 to 45 minutes after. Day five was the first day my fingers needed a break. So I made like a hippie and I climbed some trees instead. On day six, Mitch took Josh and I bouldering outside. The experience was super fun, but extremely humbling. This is where I found out that Gym climbing and gym ratings are very different than outdoors. Where I was climbing V3s inside, I was only climbing V0s outside. And real rock is way rougher on your skin. By the end of the day, I had no fingerprints left. I'm learning a lot about climbing. What'd you learn today? How to carry a backpack and a crash pad at the same time. Tell me a uh, climbing word you were learned today. The last boom. <laughs> last boom. What's the last boom? It's like your last try on a route. I think, I think it's called booming it. So then it's, it's your last boom. And by boom, do you mean burn? I've heard it both ways. <laughs> <laughs> On day eight, I got my first four minus. It was the first time I really started to notice it's getting stronger. On day 13, my fingers needed another break, but 
This time I decided to climb the second flat iron in Boulder, which is essentially a scramble up a huge slab of rock that takes you up about 700 feet in elevation. Because it's not extremely steep, it's more of a workout for the legs and not so much on the hands. And it also gives you a really good opportunity to practice trusting your feet, which is one of the hardest things for beginner climbers. On day 14, after resting my fingers, I came back and I got my first four. On day 17, Mitch and I climbed outside again and I got my first V1 outside. Woo! I have to say, although climbing outside is far more challenging, the experience is incredible and exhilarating. On these first few times going out, it almost felt like we shouldn't be allowed to go out and do this on our own. Like if my mom found out, she'd be pissed. Day 18, I stepped on a beat and my toes swelled up like crazy. And here's an important aside about climbing shoes. To be able to push through these little flakes of rock, they come to a little point, which means your toes have to fit inside of these things. And with a toe twice the size of a normal, it was pretty painful. On day 21, it felt like four was the new regular for me. I was starting to notice that I could hold on to things that I never thought would have been possible. And with the help of Mitch, I'm using better technique, which means I don't have to use as much strength. But I also noticed that I'm feeling a lot stronger. My shoulders feel great and my pulling strength feels like a new superpower. I'm quite tall, so some of these calisthenic skills can be a bit more challenging. But on this day, I decided to test out my front lever and I was actually able to hold a straddle front lever, something I'd never been able to do before. So something I was doing was paying off. On day 23, I decided to give top roping a try, so I took a quick class and got certified to belay. As I mentioned before, this is another beginner-friendly version of climbing. The individual moves are much easier, but you're gonna go way higher, 50 plus feet. And because of this, the limitation becomes your endurance and your technique, and is far less strength-oriented. And on this first day top roping, I was only able to do four climbs before I was just completely pumped out. But I could also see how I was gonna need to do both if I wanted to be a well-rounded climber. On day 26, we bouldered outside again and I got my first V2. Okay, technically it said V1 slash V2, but step in the right direction. Third flash. Third flash, baby. <laughs> Woo! Day 30, my last day, I thought for dramatic effect, I would hit my first four plus. I had had my eye on this white route that I had a feeling I was gonna be able to do. I was able to do the individual parts and I tried and I tried and I tried to put it together, but I just couldn't do it. I was like, man, how's this video gonna be exciting if there's no climax and resolution? So I decided to take a few days off, go camping and let my body just chill out. After two days of rest, day 33, I came back and I retested everything. 30 days later, See where you're at. To retest my pull-ups, I actually played the video of me doing my initial assessment in front of me so I could stay on pace. And I was able to do 15 reps. 15? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you get the first time? 11. That's four more or a 36% increase. I was able to hang for two minutes and 45 seconds, which was a 38% increase. As I mentioned before, I was able to hold that straddle front lever for like six to eight seconds, which was an enormous improvement. And to be clear, I was already doing a lot of strength training going into this whole challenge. So the fact that I gained so much in 30 days is pretty incredible. After we did my test, we went back to the gym and I crushed that four plus on the first try. I even tried another four plus and got that after just a few attempts. So I went from climbing only three pluses to being able to do some four pluses. <laughs> <laughs> Which means I went from climbing V3s in the gym to like V5 or 6. And in general, my overall upper body strength feels like it's increased dramatically. Even movements I wouldn't have expected to be affected by climbing feel stronger now. Would I recommend climbing every day? Absolutely not. The risk of overuse injuries, especially for beginners, is far too high. But for the reasons I'm about to give you, I'd still highly recommend taking on climbing as a hobby or a practice. First. It's quite accessible. All you need is climbing shoes and chalk and a harness if you're gonna top rope. And on top of that, many climbing gyms will just let you borrow this equipment if you're a member. A typical climbing gym will cost a bit more than a regular gym, but you're getting a regular gym and the climbing on top of it. But one major factor I would take into account is that the general feeling and environment of climbing gyms is far more positive and accepting than regular commercial gyms. Climbing gyms are super casual. They feel like a place where you can go to grow your capabilities, connect with others that value similar things, and have a ton of fun doing it. And it seems that the motivations of the people there 
are different than commercial gyms. Instead of the focus being on getting a better body to look good for other people, which can create a hyper-competitive and judgmental environment, the focus is on becoming better so that you can enjoy life more. I definitely saw this in myself. I was highly motivated and excited to get back to the gym, to climb more, to work out more, to take care of myself. And I think it's important to mention, having physical hobbies or activities that you care about can and should be a part of your motivation. Climbing can be extremely fun and engaging because no matter what gym you go to, there will be routes right at your level. And with a little bit of puzzling, you'll figure it out. And when you find a challenging route, you'll often experience flow, which is when your mind is completely consumed by a task. So the rest of the world just kind of fades away. And people who experience flow on a regular basis are generally more happy and more fulfilled with life. But it doesn't have to be climbing. Any physical hobby that drives you to grow, to take better care of yourself, and provides opportunities to learn about yourself or the world are 100% worth it. Guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please, like the video, comment any more challenges you think Josh and I should take on, and we'll see you in the next video.